Life is a jungle. You need savage business and finance to lead you out of the jungle today. Okay, guys, what I want to talk to you about is the difference between an online business and being a content creator. Let me explain some stuff. Being a content creator is a business model. Radio shows are content. Television shows are content. Rap albums are content. And the overwhelming amount of content on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram is entertainment content. It's not educational content, but producing content such as blogs, newsletters, these are viable business models. However, there are many people who will use the presumption of putting out usable content as a way to further their business model. I'll give you an example. There are a number of people on YouTube who put out side hustle content, how to start a business content, how to get business credit content. And as a person who's started multiple businesses, as a person who has business credit, a lot of it is wrong. It's not like, here's the thing. Let me explain to you something I'm going through with. I recently got two business credit cards from PNC Bank, applied for a line of credit and was denied because recently, I financed a new car and I had a bunch of open accounts from last year. So, and the line of credit was only for 70,000. And then what they came back was with an SBA sponsored line of credit, which takes five weeks to get. So you're, you're seeing all these people talking about getting business credit and as someone who is in the process of getting business credit, as someone who's got business credit, I can look between the smoke and see what's really burning. And I see a bunch of smoke because here's the thing. Once Graham Stephan put out how much money he made from being a content creator, which is a business, the floodgates opened up and we live in a world and I'm getting, I'm getting ready to say some stuff that may seem a little sideways. Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate claimed that he got rich from using girls in the webcam model in casinos. And this guy has a great, great level of love. Back in the day, if you started illicit type businesses such as that, people would not hold you in high regard. So from a cultural, and I'm going somewhere with this, from a cultural standpoint, people will do anything to get money regardless of the long-term ramifications. Because uh, honestly, I'm not surprised Andrew Tate's in jail. Not surprised at all, you know, because of my exposure to the sexual underground and my exposure of knowing, I just knew that it was just a matter of time before he was going to be in jail because of the things he was doing. And I use that and I say that because there's so many people who adore this guy, love this guy, and his background and his past doesn't seem to matter to these folks. But we have a bunch of people who are putting out content as a business model for personal enrichment versus putting out content to help you. And I know this from experience, and I'm gonna tell you why. I recently reset all of my channels. I reset the content and my main channel, my biggest channel, I am, at one point, I was a negative 150 subscribers because I am putting out sane, sensible, helpful, accurate, truthful content. And these people are leaving, they're leaving. And this explains that why these content creators will straight up lie because they know the vast majority of people who are consuming this content will never apply the content. And this is why someone can literally come on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and put out some advice that could be 100% false. And this, if enough people watch it, because this is the way the algorithm works. The algorithm doesn't work on if the content is helpful, useful. It doesn't work like that. The algorithm works on, is this content getting a lot of views? And let's take CPNs, credit privacy numbers, credit profile numbers. These are uh, 
tactics to get around having bad credit. And literally, there are numerous content creators that put out the CPN advice, age corporation advice, and people swallow it up because I might be wrong, but I'm gonna make this statement. There are more people who are looking for shortcuts, looking for comfort, looking for ease, looking for easy ways to get to a lot of money than there are sane, sensible, decent people who are looking to work hard and build something sustainable through their hard work and efforts. So there's a lot of people, this is how, you know, I have no clue to how many kids Kim Kardashian has, but there's someone out there who knows how many kids Kim Kardashian has, and this person has an overdrawn checking account, they have bad credit, and they don't see anything wrong with that. They're struggling to pay bills, and the focus, the focus, and this is why content creation is such a huge business model, and I will go through what is content creation again in a minute, is you've got people who should be working two, three, four jobs, who are sitting home consuming entertainment, consuming stuff that makes them feel better about themselves versus searching out educational, helpful content. Rap is content. Television shows are content. Sporting events are content. And the most biggest view content, like the NFL will literally put a replay of a game with truncated to the most exciting plays on YouTube, literally hours after the game. And these videos of a football game that was played will get millions of views in hours because people want to be entertained more than they want to be educated. And this is why we have this situation of content creators who are like, case in point, during the pandemic, there were a number of young women on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram talking about how to be a virtual sugar baby. Now, what is a virtual sugar baby? This is a woman who gets money out of a man and she never meets him. She never does anything for him other than text him or talk to him on the phone. And there was a ton of women putting out this content that you can be fat, you don't have to be attractive. And I remember this one content critic like, girl, there's some man out there, I don't care if you're 300 pounds, who's gonna look, who's, who's gonna be one of, who's gonna wanna support you, who's gonna wanna help you. I was just sitting there blown away blown away that this and that video had 150,000 views the last time I looked at it because what she was putting out was a hundred percent false and there was another girl in the UK who put out a video talking about being a sugar baby and she was she gave an actual factual realistic of the situation that video didn't get a lot of views because she was like the chances of you finding a sugar daddy that doesn't want any sugar, she said, is gonna be pretty slim enough. She says, I've known of girls to have a sugar daddy that they didn't have to have sex with, but she says, in my experience, most of the girls who have an active, dedicated, durable sugar daddy are having sex with their sugar daddies. That video got like 20,000 views. See, this is the reason that you're seeing these people jump into the content creation space and literally say, put out anything because they know the average person is not going to take action. And also, once again, the average person isn't financially sophisticated. So someone can come up and say, hey, you can go ahead and put get an age corporation, right? And you can get this age corporation and you can get up to $500,000 in funding in three weeks. Now, what did I just tell you? I have a active business, I have tax returns, I have good credit, and I got turned down for a $70,000 line of credit because I got a huge car loan just a few months ago. Yet, for some reason, the fact, and I, my corporation, 2018. So I have an aged corporation, a legitimate corporation, and I got turned down for a $70,000 line of credit because of what's on my credit report. But for some reason, there are people who hope and cling to the possibility of getting half a million dollars with bad credit because they went out and got an aged corporation. Um, credit plug knows, real estate trapper knows, it's not not going to work but these videos get views because once again the number of people out there looking for shortcuts are huge the number of people out there who have trashed their personal credit but want access to new credit under a CPN 
is crazy large. Now, there are some people who had some bad experience. Maybe someone was in an automobile accident and they couldn't work for a year and their credit went bad. That happens. But here's the thing. If you had a tragic life event, if you write what's called a goodwill letter, a lot of these creditors will take that stuff off your credit report if you had a verifiable tragic life event. But the reason that most people have bad credit isn't because they had tragic events. They had they have bad credit because of bad money management practices and reckless and frivolous spending. Every day I listen to Dave Ramsey and the number of people who are in non-business debt to the tune of 100, 200, 300, $400,000, he gets these type of calls on the regular because people out here spending money like crackheads and they're using credit. They're not actually spending money because credit is a financial device, but he literally gets these calls every day because this is why, you know, me, I want to be helpful. I want to be on point. I want to put out information that you can use to make your life better. So this is the, one of the reasons I do not lie. Uh, this is one of the reasons I do not shade the truth. This is one of the reasons I do not exaggerate because we're in a situation right now where we, we're going through this global reset and we're going through a recession. And one of the things that's happening to these careless, inconsiderate YouTubers is their views are starting to plummet because people are so financially pressed that they're trying to use this junk content and they're finding out it doesn't work. Case in point, there's a number of videos talking about you can make money with uh, GPA, GPT super chat, whatever it is, chat GPT. Now I have been on the side of using AI for a long time. There's something that was called Jasper, which was AI. I use something that's called copy AI. And in this naked form, the way it is today, you must be a skilled technician to be able to use this technology to make money. So the way that the vast majority of YouTubers have put it out here is that you can be unskilled, untrained, unseasoned, and just go ahead and use this new software and AI and make a bunch of money. And it's simply not true. But once again, these videos get views. And at the end of the day, the only person who's making money from this content is the content creator. That's it. Because, um, let me give you an example. Google hates AI content, AI generated content. So what I did is I use my, I use copy AI and I figured out a way to get around that. If you go ahead and you use copy AI to, let's say to generate a 2000 word blog post, right? And you go in and you tweak it. And I'm not even talking about heavy duty tweaking. I'm talking about maybe you tweak 20% of the content. Each paragraph, you tweak it, you put in your own line. And I ran it through the AI detector and one item that I just tweaked, I literally rewrote maybe 20 sentences. And it was like 25% AI, 75% original. So if I had tweaked 25 sentences, it would have had a very high, because the thing is, because I'm a skilled technician, because I do this for real, I have figured out a way to get around that and I can use my AI to create content much quicker, much efficiently and just tweak it a little bit and be able to put it on my blog and make money. But how do I know this? Because I have written several books the old fashioned way and I can use this technology to write a book and I can tweak it a little bit and none of the AI detectors will know that it was generated by AI because I know how to tweak it. But once again, I've written 12 books in my life. I know how to write. I know how to put together a product that sells. So I have the experience level and you, you can, you put this copy AI in the hands of a writer, they can clean up with it because they already have the fundamental skill set of being able to write. But if you just put this hands in this this technology in the hands of someone who's not skilled, who doesn't have any particular skill sets, they're not going to make any money. They're just not going to make any money. But the content creators, and go ahead and um, 
what is it? It's Chat GPT. Just go to YouTube and look at all the chat. They've got hundreds of thousands of views. And you wanna know why? The recession, people are pressed, people are looking for ways to make money. And what many people are gonna find out that this so called wonder technology, because in its basic form, because I know how to write and I will see what it puts, spits out. I, I can see that in its basic form, the stuff is just okay. But if you know how to write and you know how to tweak, you can make it shine. But the average person without the skill sets of being able to write a blog post natively, they're not gonna make any money. They're just not gonna make any money. Now, the content creators are gonna make money and the companies that harness the AI and put it in a form like there was this this company Linza. They've created they use the AI to create a product that they sell for 10 bucks. So they've made it very easy, simple to use. So once again, understand there are many people who are in the content create space who talk business, but they make 90 percent of their money from content creation. They do not make their money from providing a service, selling a product. They don't know nothing about business because they make so much money from content creation. And you know, once again, content creation is not a bad business model. It's actually a lucrative business model. Once again, radio shows are content, television's content, movies content, sporting events are content, musical concerts are content. So it's a valid, durable business model, but don't be deceived by these content creators who are pretending to be business people and to render you business advice. Because literally there's a bunch of them I've been watching and I'm starting to see their views starting to tank because people are trying to use this advice and they're finding out it's missing a lot of critical elements. It's missing a lot of stuff you can use. And they're starting to turn, well, not turn, they're not coming out with torches and pitchforks, but they're stop consuming this garbage bubblegum content that has no real world applications. So once again, this is one of the reasons I reset my channel. The things I talk about, the things, you know, you can take it to the bank. You can go ahead and put this out there. And the training, I'm very honest and truthful because you're paying me money to help you. And I take that very seriously. So with that, I've got some new things going on. It's a recession, money's tight. So one of the things I'm doing, and I'm gonna give them to you in order, I have something called Hustle Camp. Hustle Camp is foundational beginner friendly business training. If you go ahead and get Hustle Camp, I'm gonna give you the masculine frame and disruptive male. So you get all three of those. So the Hustle Camp information will be below. Now, let's say you're more seasoned, maybe you already have a business and you're looking to get into something then you would want to get into the um, wealth blueprint where I get into more advanced tactics and strategies. But let's say you go ahead and get the hustle camp and later on you're ready for the advanced training. I will deduct what you paid for hustle camp and I will send you an email with a discount code deducting what you paid for hustle camp so you can get into the wealth blueprint later on and not spend the same money twice. So all of that stuff will be below the video in the first comment. So that's all I got for you guys. I will talk to you later.